This is my February wrap-up, my Blackathon wrap-up, my Black History Month wrap-up. I didn't read as many books as I planned to that were on my TBR. I read Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, although I started this a few days before February. I still, it took me like three weeks to get through it, and I'm just like, why? Why did it take so long? I mean, it's, it's, it's there's still some very heavy subject matter in here, maybe that's what took it a while longer but I felt like I would have been able to like you know read through it wasn't like very very like the writing wasn't too intense in a way that's like you have to reread sentences too much it was just very very like straightforward but there was like still a, a, a beauty and a poetry to the writing so I don't know why it took me so long but I enjoyed this book a lot I had a great time reading it after completing this book I started reading The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. I'm enjoying it. I am, what, 213 pages in. And I feel like this I could have finished sooner, but it's just, I don't know. I think back-to-back -back slavery, it's intense. And then I'm thinking about reading another book about slavery. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm reading a lot about slavery. And it is upsetting me. It's upsetting me, my homegirls, everybody, my ancestry. It's upsetting everybody, okay? It makes it a lot easier to be like, I don't know if I could trust white people because their history of violence. I've said it. I've said it. I've said it before. Let's say it. a history of violence. All this fictionalization, it teaches you so much about how a lot of these structures and systems that we currently have, where they came from and how they were created. In this book, I'm understanding, like when people talk about slave catchers and police, you're seeing the, the correlation, the connection to how it transitioned from slavery on into, we have police who don't care about black people. And it shows you where the mindset comes from. It's not like, oh, it's this brand new thing. It's not this thing that came like a few years or it's like just a few bad apples. It's like it's baked into the system of it because it's in from its inception, from the time it started, what their principles and their ideas, how the mindset that goes into being a police officer, it's always been there. Like it's always, it's been there from the start. Like you're reading it and you're like, Hold up. So the same people that they got now who are racist, but just a little bit more civilized about their racism and their, like, brutality against black people. They always been there. They just been a lot more, for lack of a better term, Neanderthal-like. Like, they just been a little, a lot more, like, caveman about it. A little bit more, like, backwoods. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a wild book. Like, I, I'm just looking forward to finishing it, so completing it, because I had feelings, I had thoughts, feelings on this book. It's a lot. It's a lot. And and I also plan on reading Binti by Nettie Okorafor. I will read this in March. Uh, well, once I finish this, I guess. I don't know. I made a, I started making other plans to read other things. I plan on reading The Black Veins by Aisha Monet and Freshwater by Ekweke Amezi as well for Black History Month, but I will try to read those in March or probably push those back till April. We'll see. I'm making other plans. My mind is changing about what I want to read now. And then also, I will read Beast Made of Night and Crown of Thunder. Most likely, I might read those all the way in June for Black Future Month because I'm still here for Black Future Month. I still want it. I still want Black Future Month. I'm serious about it. I'm lobbying for it. I'm putting it out. I'm putting it out. Who knows? By the time June comes around, it's going to turn into Black Future Month. There's power over here, okay? So we're going to make this whole Black Future Month happen in June. Also in March, Erica at the Broken Spine is hosting an Unkindness of Ghosts slow read along. I am trying to take part in it, but because I'm still reading this and I'm almost done, I'm tr like, I have to try to, and then also, this is also about like slavery as well too. There's like slavery in here. So it's just like more slavery to read, more of it to just make me a little bit more upset but also it is important knowledge. I want to read this to kind of understand the experience, not necessarily to carry around that baggage, but to understand, because I feel like prior to reading, prior to reading The Underground Railroad, I kind of understood slavery from like watching movies like Roots and Queen and stuff like that. But it's like, I really feel like re once re like reading all these details are just like, it's really making me understand what happened 
and how much of that is probably within my own cellular structure, my DNA of like what's happened to like my ancestry who were in slavery and it's like to know that they were in it and some of the fears and how we think and how we feel now, that has come from slavery in itself. But I will do my best, I will catch up to the reading. They're having sprints, so I need to catch up to chapter six. And additionally, talking about sprints, I also want to shout out Bori Queer Reads, Ari at Bori Queer Reads. They are Afro-Latinx and queer, and also a, a fellow New Yorker. Shout out to Ari. They have a lot of sprints going on. Check out Ari at Bori Queer. Say hi to them. Also, for the month of February, I decided I was going to listen to mainly black artists and in that time it was also kind of like putting together a playlist of like all these different queer artists that I've learned I've been learning about so there's like um one of my favorites that I'm listening to that I love right now is Warren Dumas he has his EP Glitter on Fire it is worth checking out I love it because it's very like funk upbeat classy fun it's all these like cool ass things I love and he's very much inspired by Beyonce and you can hear it in his in, in his music and in how he in his in his vocals like he's very inspired by Beyonce which is very similar to how Chloe of Chloe and Halle she well actually Chloe and Halle both have that very like they're very like being mentored by Beyonce they are very like you can hear Beyonce like like her influence coming through in them and in their music so and just in their vocals and their singing so it's like very similar with Warren Warren is like he loves his Beyonce down and I'm like yes I get you I'm with you goddamn right my favorite song on there honestly is Ride and I love Drug like the first song and the last song are like my favorites but I love the entire album I love Green Light which is very much a, hom a homage to Green Light on Beyonce's B-Day album which is one of my favorite which is one of actually is my favorite Beyonce album it is like B-Day is my favorite Beyonce album it's perfect it's like one of the best it's like it's my favorite Beyonce album period 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 done shout out to Warren I love his album I listened to that for Black History Month it's so good his EP's so good and it's worth checking out like you have to listen to it it's so good it's quality content plus I also listened to I found out in February that Keenan Lonsdale who is best known for Kid Flash on CW's The Flash yeah I think he came out like a year or two ago as like being queer so he dropped his album last year rainbow boy yo the album is amazing it's amazing he even got a song on there called like the gay street fighter which is like yo that's wild the gay street fighter <laughs> but i love it he's just like being bold and being out there and expressive i do feel like some of his thoughts on the album are very like baby gay thoughts like very baby pride thoughts that are like queer militant gay militant but i enjoyed the album rainbow boy one of my favorite songs of theirs i confess my love honestly it is i also love the ancient one and i also love play on that album like yo he got he made an amazing album i love rainbow dragon rainbow dragon is so good like his voice i love his voice on the record like i love it just to, and to think that he's like he he's come from acting to doing music and I, I I'm not sure of his history with music prior to acting but he's like really really like I just love the album like I love his voice on there he honestly at times and he's got so much range in his voice so much range he goes to falsettos to this like to his to, to this like deeper raspier voice that kind of reminds me of Omarion's like but it's just so good like I love it I love his album I love his music and Shout out to Keenan Lonsdale. Shout out to Stevie Derek on Twitter and Instagram. He really inspired me to like really listen to more queer artists. Like I've wanted to because Cakes the Killer is one of my favorite, like one of my favorite rappers. Like he's one of my favorite rappers. I don't know if he's going by he or they now, but I'm not sure. But Case the Killer is one of my favorite rappers. And for a long time, that's kind of like the only rapper that was queer that I knew. So now it's like, I'm getting to find out about so many more. There's like so many black queer artists that are out there that 
we're learning more about and Stevie Derrick with his indie artist spotlight is really bringing a lot of them a lot more to the forefront that's how I learned about Warren Dumas's Glitter on Fire EP oh and also for the month of February I watched Fake Famous it's a documentary on HBO and that was that was very uh, insightful and enlightening. Mm. So, and it makes me think about like, that's why in my DMs I'm always getting like, you know, you can buy fake followers and stuff like that. And it's just so fascinating to see that on Fake Famous, that was such a huge thing. It's it's ridiculous stuff. But Fake Famous, that was entertaining. It was interesting, but it did feel a little shortchangy because the only black person that they followed, they I felt like after he said that he kind of didn't want to go along with the experiment and the way that it went, they didn't really kind of check back in with him like a few months later to kind of see what was the rest of his trajectory like at the end of, how, of their experiment cycle. Did he grow anymore? Did he not grow? What was some of his strategies? strategies in the process and the main reason why I watched this is because the friend zone podcast they did an episode discussing the fake famous documentary they brought up the fact that it would have made more sense to also include a black woman building her influencer account on the show the people that they used weren't really too much of a challenge there was a white woman a blonde haired blue-eyed white woman and that's an easy build up that's an easy influencer build dye her hair blonde could probably throw some blue contacts in and just put her up to do just like take a whole bunch of shots and she's building up her her following really fast and she's getting a lot of people like sending her stuff easily like it's shown on youtube regularly on book on booktube like somebody white would come in and like in six months they're like at a hundred thousand well, maybe 20,000, but by six months, they're like a big deal, a huge. Somebody black will come in and they're still probably at like 200 in six months, you know, and there's no major growth. Like, Fake Famous was so enlightening to me, you know. Also, the friend zone discussion on Fake Famous, it really, really made me think even deeper about what was missing from that documentary because it it did feel it was a light documentary but it also felt it like walking away from it i felt like they could have done more they didn't give it enough they didn't give it enough and finally i decided to haul a bunch of books because i was just in the mood you know and there's like a bunch of books that i can i keep seeing that i'm like i want that i want that i want that let's just finally get it so i finally got kingdom of souls by rena baron i've heard a lot of that i've had half her mixed reviews about this but i just definitely really want to read this jesse at bow ties and books talked about this book and a lot of what they said in this book makes it sound like something i really want to read like just the characterizations the connections in this book the i guess there's a romance in here i think too that's really good so it sounds really good so i'm like i'm looking forward to reading this and i'm kind of building up this arsenal of like black fantasy kind of african inspired stories like i really want to read a bunch of those and just get into like black african fantasy stories you know i also got the gilded ones by namina forna i am i heard a lot of great things about this so i'm looking forward to that as well i got the space between worlds by makaya johnson i've heard a lot of great things about that too i love the premise so i'm just like looking forward to reading this in time i got a river of royal blood by amanda joy i've heard really mixed reviews about this one almost to the point of like some people really just don't like this book but I definitely wanted to add it to the arsenal of like magic fantasy with black women black girls in it so I definitely am looking forward to reading this and who knows I might like it for what it's giving let's see how it goes and then I also heard about Given by Nandi Taylor it is a Wattpad published book but I heard really good things about this like I know what Wattpad Wattpad has its reputation to it that like you know because it's like you can put a bunch of fan fiction you can put a bunch of it's got after after is part of its reputation and people talk badly about after they said after is trash it ain't that good it's trash but I'm believing that this book is gonna be good I'm believing in it like a black girl dragons fantasy African culture like 
I'm looking forward to reading this. I also got Daughters of Henri Henri by Rennie K. Amayo. Uh, oh, I heard a lot of great things about this. I know Jesse at Bow Ties and Books said this book is like so amazingly good. So I'm just like, I'm looking forward to reading this. It's just gonna be, I'm gonna have my own Black Girl Magic like collection of books to read. Plus I also have Children of Blood and Bone. Ray Bearer. Also, because I'm in a super quarter mood, I am reading... I want to read Meet Cute Club and Boyfriend Material. Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. I've... I don't know. I From the time I saw this, I... And I read the premise, I was like, oh, I want to read this. I recently heard a review by Joel at Fictional Fates, and he said it was a little too fast-paced. He felt it could have been better, but it was still a good book. I'm just in the mood to read something like Super Gay and just like romantic so like let's read this so i'm gonna read this and also boyfriend material this is giving me red white and royal blue vibes and although i haven't read that yet i just like the premise of like i i realize i like a kind of romance that's like high profile characters like people who are just like rich and in the public eye and they end up in like romances either with somebody else well more likely with somebody else who's also high profile like them and they have like this publicity public relationship kind of thing i like those kind of stories and you know navigating your private life and your public life so i like those kind of stories i'm excited about like a romance like that so i'm looking forward to this and i'm looking forward to finally reading red red white and royal blue and they're both british i love british iconography i love britain although they are colonizers and imperialists and all this all this terrible stuff in history like i grew up in a colony of britain so there's still a little bit of that British brainwashing that's still in there, you know. But you know, I just still love the I the, the the I love the accent, I love the 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 flag. Well, I love the flag that much. I don't know. I just enjoy the iconography. I've just I think it's like cute and funny and silly, but it also still means really deplorably horrible things. I don't know. They the British Empire is terrible. I'm also watching The Crown right now. Also. I've been watching The Bachelor. The Bachelor is a mess. It is a huge mess. It been a mess. I don't know if it's if it was like that because to me, I've never watched. I've never watched The Bachelor until I watched Rachel Lindsay's season, and that's only because Black woman, Black woman Bachelorette. That was it. And now I'm only watching this season of The Bachelor because first Black Bachelor. Like that's all that mattered, Black people. Because at the end of the day. I don't feel like I could have related to like these white bachelors and bachelorettes like finding like, like I didn't care. I feel like I've seen this before. That some um, this was all set up for white people. But either way, I'm watching it. I don't know if in the beginning, the first seasons, it would it felt like a more classy affair. It looked like like watching it now, even with Rachel Lindsay season, it's like it's a little trashy. I always felt like The Bachelor, and then there's like flavor of love and flavor of love was like this more down to earth kind of like but it wasn't as classy as the bachelor but the bachelor ain't that damn classy and if they probably was any classier they would be a snooze fest that i guess only middle america housewives would enjoy you know but but i'm enjoying i'm still watching like the bachelor right now to see who matt picks and how messy and ridiculous and deplorable these white women can be. I just watched the episode where this Heather Martin woman comes in, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman who they burn, who they basically burn at the stake. And I think production does not like her. They didn't like her on the season when she first came on to be with some Colton man from the previous season. So they brought her back to embarrass her. Because they set her up. They said she rented a, a minivan. She came, embarrassed herself, talking to Chris Harrison. Embarrassment. They just embarrass this girl all over the... They just embarrass her. They just embarrass her. She pulls up in the, the minivan. She's talking about, I wanted to meet Matt. She goes in quarantine. She's putting a pizza on top of her head. Embarrassment again. She's throwing her hair out, talking about, I'm Rapunzel. Come, 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 like, lift me. Like, come climb up my hair. Come see me, Matt. Like, embarrassment again. She shows up. She cuts off this other girl's date while well, embarrassing the black girl. That was bad. She embarrassed that girl. Then additionally, I'm guessing production sent her out to go meet the other girls. The other girls are like, who are you and why are you here? Okay, how do you know Matt? 
you don't even know Matt? Girl, why are you here? Girl, go home. They're basically, like, embarrassing her there. Matt then says, it's two, it's six weeks late into the show. Why are you here? Like, well, he didn't say, why are you here? But he's like, this ain't gonna happen. I'm about to go to hometowns with all these other girls who I made connections with. Like, go home, girl. Go home. So she goes home and she's crying and she drives back in the minivan. They don't even drive her up and let Matt meet her at the door. They really didn't like that girl. They embarrassed her. Like, she's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed white woman. You would think she would get more than that. But she didn't. <laughs> And I ain't gonna lie, as much through her tears, I was laughing at her because at the end of the day, how often do you see a blonde haired, blue eyed white woman like just really not be like held to this super high standard, but she's like on equal playing field with like, I thought I'm considered equal playing field with everybody else who they get like shitted on and embarrassed in media, you know, like. She gets it, and she got it from all the girls, the, like, mostly the women of color. Like, there was, there were Asian women, there were black women, just like, like, girl, why are you here? Go home. This is for, like, for us. Like, go home, girl. We don't want to see you. And she's all, like, tears, like, oh, why are you all so mean to me? Because you shouldn't be here. That's your entitlement, thinking that you could just come in in the sixth hour talking about, I want to be with him. There's a chance that you could be my... It's like, girl, go home. Go home. Just go to sleep. Go to bed. Go go find the next season. Production didn't like her, girl. They embarrassed her. They thought, like, girl, you gonna get... There's gonna be a chance for you. No, they embarrassed her. They didn't like her at all. Anyway, so I also got yesterday's history. I just recently found out about this, I think, prior to like right before black history month so i was like i had to get this book because i love the premise it is also it is a time travel story and it's queer like so it's just like i'm excited about this and it is written by a black author i am looking forward to reading this this sounds amazing ah oh, it sounds like an amazing story where and it's like also a a, a tr love triangle too that spans across like time like I'm here for this. I'm excited about reading this. This is about to be a bad bitch right here. What's good? You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. And finally, I am going to read The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. I got this. I had to have it because Robert Jones Jr., I recently found out like sometime close to the end of last year that he is son of baldwin on twitter and for a long time i've heard of son of baldwin i think on like tumblr and twitter and i think he has like a facebook but like you never get to see his face you don't really know who he is i've always heard about him but i didn't know who he was or anything like that he did a kind of like a panel event celebration of james earl hardy and it was like the 25th anniversary of b-boy blues there is when i found out about the prophets by J by robert jones jr and i found out the premise of this book which is it's set in slavery in the time of slavery but it's like two queer men finding love and living together and stuff like that so i was just like it's exciting like i was looking forward to reading this and then also jonathan it to be black and loved he read it and he did a review of it so i definitely want to read this before i watch his review because i know he's about to break it down definitely check out jonathan's channel i love his channel it's amazing definitely get you get up in there and check it out also another black booktuber black male booktuber that i recently found out is dwight pages i love his energy i love his channel already he is very 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 black very very black very very queer very very out here very very gay out here and i live for it he's he's just giving me very like art artsy but also banji and i live for it and i'm loving that he is a part of the community giving us that energy that we need more of it. We need more of that. Definitely check out Dwight Pages. His name is Timothy Dwight. So definitely check out Timothy's channel, Dwight Pages. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I'm out this bitch like Fleek the fuck.